Okay, last week was the National Weather Service's Severe Weather Awareness Week. Now, since most of the area was preoccupied with this little thing called the Super Bowl, we wanted to still bring you important information about what weather threats we have here in Tampa Bay. So yesterday uh, we looked at how the Tampa Bay area received some of the most tornadoes in the country. Yet, yet we do not use sirens to warn people of their threats. So why is that? We've got that story right now up on 10tampabay.com. Now behind Kansas and Texas, Florida receives the third most tornadoes on average in the US. Now fortunately, a majority of those tornadoes are relatively weak, but strong tornadoes are possible. So how do these ferocious phenomena form? Let's go beneath the surface this morning and talk about how these things form. OK, so what you need are several different components, several different elements in the atmosphere. One of those you need to have obviously winds coming in, in a certain direction at the surface. You then need stronger upper level winds. Now those winds can be coming in the same direction or they can be coming in in a different direction. We call that shear. You hear us talk about wind shear. It's either directional or speed shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere that creates this rotating column of air somewhere in the mid levels to lower levels of the atmosphere. Ultimately, when you start to see thunderstorms develop and the updrafts associated with those thunderstorms that begins to take that rotating column of air and lift it and ultimately the shear causes it to tilt right and that tilting of that column of air begins to produce this wall cloud and that's the beginning stages of a tornado. If the conditions are just right, that wall cloud can produce a tornado and it will descend all the way down to the ground. And when it hits the ground, that's when it's a touchdown. That's when it's a tornado. And that's when you need to be seeking shelter.